Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the report for Tiger Mount. Uh, we're going to talk about Disgrace Tame, uh, or Grace Tame, uh, uh, on tonight's show, and uh, what load of bullshit she is, ladies and gentlemen. So stick around and listen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about uh, Grace Tame, and um, you know, you know, what can you say about it? I mean, you know, it just seemed to be. Her nomination of Australian of the Year was completely political. It was com it's clearly come from like the woke agenda. I mean, you know, let's I guess let's examine the situation. First of all, I mean, she was like I don't know, sixteen or seventeen. She had an affair with an older teacher. It's not like you know she was six years old and was molested by a fucking father or or a teacher or something like that. This is somebody who, by the what the age when you reach the age of sixteen, seventeen, you're fairly um, what's the word? Uh, uh, you, you can make your own decisions, you know what I mean? And if she's decided to have an affair with um, uh, an older teacher, there's an element of that she's complicit in this. I'm not saying that it's it's something that should be encouraged. Absolutely not. And uh, the teacher was obviously um, wrong to have done it. But, you know, it wasn't like, you know, he was like raping her, you know, like as she was a child. I mean, she she is, is at an age where she can, 16, 7 is an age where you can make responsible decisions like that. And obviously 16, 7 year olds are often having sex with each other uh, um, uh, at that age so it's not really the end of the world you know this whole situation to me Grace Tame strikes me as, as what I would call a professional victim obviously this happened to her whether it traumatized her or not it maybe it did you know who knows um, but like uh, I think that she saw that, you know, this is something that she could trade on, you know what I mean? And uh, she could become a professional victim and, you know, become like a kind of outspoken kind of uh, feminist, um, you know, uh, bobblehead. Uh, and, you know, that's exactly what she became when she became Australian of the Year. You know, she was constantly um, lecturing Scott Morrison on this and that. And remember there was that whole, I did a report from Tiger Mountain on this topic about, you know, the whole sex scandal that, you know, uh, was apparently to do with the Liberal Party. It was just a smear campaign organised by Labor. Um, you know, it was a nonsense. Um, you know, the thing that was aimed at um, the former Attorney General and um, and also there was some staffer, Liberal staffer, who'd done something inappropriate. Somehow they managed to mesh these two stories together and, you know, it, it was just a bullshit, you know, and uh, Grace Tame was in the middle of it. You know, I mean, all this whole situation with her was entirely political and then recently uh, she turned up, I think it was there announcing the next Australian of the Year, who of course is a disabled person because it's always got to be some bullshit like that. Um, and, um, you know, so, um, you know, they, this time, you know, and then Grace Tame was not not smiling, showing you know her whole displeasure with Scott Morrison. I mean, you know, I, I haven't been a huge fan of Scott Morrison during um, uh, the pandemic because I think he's just sat on his hands and allowed the globalist agenda um, of control and um, totalitarianism to kind of sweep all across uh, this country. So I have a problem with Scott Morrison myself. But like, you know, it's clear that what they want the um, the cabal and the powers that be, they want you know uh, a Labor federal government, and that would be absolutely worse. I mean, you know, regardless of what we say about Scott Morrison, he has resisted to some extent. I would say some of the worst excesses of you know he's not Daniel Andrews, for example. You know, I mean, you know, he's often spoken out in favour of um, you know um, some level of autonomy, some level of free choice in relation to vaccines and this agenda. But you know, I mean, you, you can see how. Albanese would be the exact opposite. He would be basically like a federal, um, you know, uh, version of Daniel Andrews. So, you know, I mean, Scott Morrison, while he's not, hasn't been perfect, you know, he does have some value, I think, and that he's definitely absolutely labor, um, a lot better than um, federal labor, and we should all, everybody in the conspiracy community, everybody on the new right should keep that in mind. You know, I mean, he may not have been perfect, but he's a lot better than fucking Anthony Albanese and uh, a federal labor party would be. So that's all I wanted to say, and I think all this stuff to do with Grace Tay, and you know she's just a professional victim she's dining out on her so-called abuse that she was absolutely uh, complicit in she was 16 or 17 when it was going on it's not like someone held a gun to her head you know what I mean like I just think this whole situation um, is just uh, a manufactured nonsense and the fact that she was the Australian of the year um, was ridiculous uh, and uh, you know, it just goes to show the politicization of everything and the politicization of things like Australian of the year and um, you know it, it's just again how woke culture has swept through um, our society and is you know uh, attempting to destroy it 
um, by filling it with kind of woke political nonsense. And that's all I wanted to say tonight on the Report from Tucker Mountain. Thank you for listening.